Welcome back. This is our third training video on how to lead your company forward to make your business visions a reality. So we've talked about leadership and we've talked about how to motivate your team to make your business visions become a reality. And you know, when we first talked to uh, quite a few of our clients first about this, uh, it's kind of one of those things where you know they've, they've tried everything and they're actually were kind of frustrated that they uh, hadn't reached their, their goals yet and they're really having a hard time getting everybody on the same page. So the whole purpose of this process that I've been walking through is really to fix all that because at the end of the day, what we find is that employees, they actually do want to be successful. Oftentimes though, because they don't feel appreciated for their work, which we've talked about, or because they don't understand what your vision is, they don't understand why you're in business or why you're trying, what it is you're looking to accomplish, oftentimes they just feel lost and they don't really understand what results you want them to actually come up to. Because you know, when we actually survey employees individually, we actually find that they do want to be successful. They actually do want to come to a place to work to where they feel like they're there for just more than a paycheck, that they're actually there to make a difference in the world and of course provide for their family. But more than anything is to truly be appreciative for what they do and also to really feel like they're part of something bigger than themselves. They're not just with another, they're just not another number, or just another person within an organization. They're actually looking to uh, make a difference in people's lives. So before we get into how to keep your team accountable, uh, which is what we're talking about in this video, I kind of wanted to summarize what we've talked about before. And so there's three steps in really scaling your business and getting your team engaged all on the same page, all moving in unison towards accomplishing the vision that you have for your company. So the first we talked about is we talked about how to lead your company by engaging your employees. And we talked about how important it was to have an identity statement or a brand purpose. Uh, I shared with you in the first video that our brand purpose is delivering, uh, excuse me, delivering freedom to business owners and to their employees because at the end of the day, we see our, our job as to helping our clients and helping their employees reach their full potential. Because as I said in the first video, a company grows in direct proportion to how well and how fast their people are growing. And what we talked about within how to lead your company is first is to really connect with your brand purpose or why is it you're in business? Why is it that you have all the different things you could have chosen? Why did you choose this company? Why did you choose the industry that you are in right now? The second thing that we talked about is what are your core values? What are the five things that you want to hold your team accountable to, to make sure that they're actually conducting themselves in a manner that you want? Because at the end of the day, if you really think about who, who has the most interactions, with your customers and clients on a daily basis, typically it's not yourself. It's typically the people that are helping deliver the products and services that your company stands for. So it's so important to have core values and it's even more important how to keep them accountable. We'll talk more about to that today in our, uh, in our training in this video. The third thing we talked about on how to lead your business is conduct a SWOT analysis. And really, as you're going through this process of creating your brand purpose, your identity statement, whatever you want to call it, and then of course your core values and your SWOT analysis, bring in your executive team, bring in the leaders of your company and start formulating, this, uh, start formulating these things or these components with them because what we find is that if people feel like they're actually contributing and making something happen and they're contributing to it, they feel like they're actually creating it for themselves. They actually feel like they're actually helping to create uh, this company and they feel part of it. So the level of engagement when that actually happens is, is absolutely just incredible. It's out of this world. And the last leadership component we talked about is coming up with your blue sky vision. Uh, we talked about that ours, well, our blue sky vision was to uh, have the largest privately held consulting company in the United States. So it's a 10 year goal typically, which is a vision statement that it seems difficult to achieve at this point, but reasonable. In other words, it's not something far fetched like, okay, we'll never get there, not even if you gave us 20 years. A blue sky vision should be the vision as to what you want your company to look like in 10 years. We talked about that JFK, uh, John F. Kennedy's blue sky vision was in the next decade to put a man on the moon. So that is the time frame of what your vision should be. It should be what it inspires you to come in to work each day or to your business each day and really achieve that. And what also inspires your team to help you achieve it as well. And we find that when you connect to why it is you want to achieve that vision and communicate that to your staff or to your company as a whole, 
we really see the level of engagement increase significantly. Now, you know, I, I know what you may be thinking, like, you know, Charles, you don't know my people. Uh, you don't, I've tried something like this in the past. Here's the thing. What this leadership style is based on, on how to really get everybody on the same page and really make your business vision become reality, is not based on some hoax or some training or something that hasn't been tried before. We have implemented this at over 1,100 companies, 1,110 to be exact. Uh, we, had, we, had, we had one uh, come on that we did yesterday. And what we find is that the feedback that we get from our clients is like, you know what, Charles, we've tried everything, we were skeptical. But you know what, we gave this a shot because you were the only company that offered us a money back guarantee. And guess what, Charles, you guys really delivered. And finally, my team is acting in unison. We're on the same page together. And I'm going to talk to you about later on and how to make that vision a reality for your business as well. So after the leadership, which is engaging your employees through your story, your brand purpose, and your core values and your SWOT analysis, then our second video we talked about uh, bringing in the rest of your staff, your, your, your middle management team, your managers, your directors, and say, okay, here's our brand purpose. Here's our core values and how we're going to operate. Here's our blue sky vision. This is what we want to be in 10 years. And this is our SWOT analysis and really kind of getting their feedback and getting their buy-in onto that. What we talked about after that is, okay, now that everybody kind of understands what you're looking to accomplish, is to get the feedback of your mid-managers and of your director and say, okay, if our blue sky vision is this, what should be our long-term goals? In other words, what sh where should we be in five years? If your blue sky vision is 10 years, then our long-term goal should be what are our five-year goals to make sure that if we hit those goals within five years, we'll be on track to hitting our blue sky vision, which is now our 10-year goal. You see how it all kind of fits together? In other words, your brand purpose is why you exist. Your core values is how you operate or how you conduct yourself in business. Your SWOT analysis is to get a good assessment as to where you are now. And then your vision is, okay, based upon our SWOT analysis and the reason we're in business and our core values, what do we want to stand for in 10 years? What is our goal to be like in 10 years? And your long-term goals is basically just kind of a, a millstone or a mile marker that says, okay, you're on track or you, know, you, you might need to make some course corrections. So this system is built upon the way that people uh, engage. It's, the, it's, it's based upon how to really empower people because once you start getting their feedback on how to make that happen, they own it. And we have gotten tremendous feedback from our clients that have actually used this. And gosh, Charles, it's amazing what happens when I engage my employees and I give them a safe place to bring up their ideas to where no idea is stupid. It's amazing the amount of things we find out. And what you're really doing is you're allowing people to think and give you feedback because, you know, in our culture today, so many people are being taught that, look, you're not supposed to think, just do what I ask you to do and just do it and that's it. And when we actually want our employees and want our team members to kind of give us feedback, it's incredible. When we ask our team member for feedback, it's, it never amazes me to hear the creative, what happens when the creative juices start going when we ask for their feedback. Uh, just the other day, I asked my um, the guy who handles all of our Infusionsoft uh, contacts is how we can make it better. And it was incredible the ideas and our, our open, rate up, open rate went up significantly and our click-through rates. But if I would never would have asked him that question, I would have never engo engaged him and I would have never have known and he wouldn't have failed empowered. So basically what I do is I, I tell him, look, these are the results that we're after. How can we go about doing it? And he delivers on those every time because it's crystal clear on what it is that we're looking to accomplish. So the first step in managing your team and getting them to be empowered is to ask them, okay, if this is our blue sky vision in 10 years, where should we be in five years? And then break those, that five-year goal down into one-year goals. So what are the five to seven one-year goals or 12-month goals that we actually should, should uh, strive for in order to keep us on pace to hit those long-term goals in five years, which ultimately is going to get us to our 10-year goals. And then after you have your 2000 or your, your next 12 month goals, then it break them down by each division. So for example, um, and if your goal is to increase sales 20% over the next 12 months, how will that affect engineering? What goals do they need to have over the next quarter to make that 12 month goal happen? Uh, what type of, uh, do you have a sales staff big enough to handle it? So maybe HR has a function in that in that goal. So maybe it's that you're going to hire some more sales staff or to actually need to give them sales training. 
Um, well, how does that affect your manufacturing or operations or your fulfillment department if you want to increase goals 20%? So by having the one-year goal, the next step after that is to ask each of your division heads what goals should they be hitting over the next 90 days in order to make that happen. And we typically recommend keeping your quarterly goals to about two to five quarterly goals. Otherwise, it just becomes way too much and it just becomes too big of a goal to hit. So it's really getting those uh, 12 month goals down into 90 day sprints, we call them, which is exactly what uh, Calvi says in his book called the, um, we actually got it from him because we found it to be such a great practice that we actually implemented within this process and the results have been tremendous. But uh, in his book called the four disciplines of execution, they say have your goal, yes, but also break them down into 90 day sprints where they, where, where you can actually chew, chew on them or sink your teeth into them and actually make sure that you're on track. So that's the management aspect of it. And what it looks like when it's all said and done is something kind of like this. This is actually the one page plan that we put together for our clients that go through this process of really engaging, empowering, and encouraging their team. So as we see up here, there's a brand purpose. Then they have their values up here. And by the way, uh, our software is such that they actually, the employees, look at their progress on a day-by-day -day basis. In other words, it gives you a, a weekly and daily summary as to how well you're doing on your goals, which we'll talk about in just a second. But what this does, here's the blue sky vision, down here is the SWOT analysis, and then here's the long-term goals, the uh, 2014 uh, goals, because this is something that we did for one of these clients last year. And then these are all the different goals here on a 90-day sprint basis. So what it does here on the goals, is it basically uh, uh, the software allows you to put each employee, each division in there and see how they're tracking uh, along in the 90 day goal. So that shows them, okay, this is what my responsibility is. These are the results that I need to achieve for the next 90 day goals so that we can hit our one year goal so that we can hit our long term five year goals so that we can accomplish our vision. That's truly showing them how they fit into the bigger picture. Because remember, from the first video, employees only want two things to, be, to, to, to increase your performance. Number one, to be appreciated. And number two, to feel they're like they're part of something bigger than themselves. Well, this plan does exactly that. It shows them how their daily contribution helps them build a, a, build a company and something bigger than themselves. So what we're going to talk about today, though, very, very specifically, we'll talk more about that later on in case you wanted to take this further. So what I want to talk about today is something very important, which is accountability, or how do we encourage our team as we go along this process with our 90-day goals, 12-month goals, and how do we review their progress in a manner that doesn't shut them down, but in, in, instead engages them even further. And before we talk about this too much further, I wanted to define some terms. Um, encouragement, first and foremost, uh, is the definition of encouragement is to pour courage into someone. Uh, my pastor, David Riggle, uh, said that a couple of months ago, and it really, really resonated to me. I mean, I've been using the word encouragement a lot uh, since we've been practicing um, um, our business. But to hear it in that manner, that really, really solidified it for me. So encourage is to pour courage into, excuse me, pour, pour courage. I can't say that word today for some reason. <laughs> Sorry about that. And what it does is it helps them along the path. You know, because uh, anytime you create a new goal or a long-term vision, there's always an element of, of, of fear or uncertainty with it because you're trying to create something that you haven't created before. But what I find is that if you use these principles, you know, the engagement and that we talked about, how to engage your employees with leadership, which has to do with your brand purpose and your vision, and with management by knowing what results you're expecting from each person over the next 90 day, one year, and five years, what that does is it now gives you a solid foundation on how to encourage your employees and on how to keep them accountable. And the word accountability simply means to take account. The root word of accountability is account. So it's an accounting term where one person and only one person is responsible for just tracking the progress of a particular plan. So let's talk about practically how to do this. So now that you have your 90 day goals, uh, this is really where we find the rubber meets the road. And this is actually, quite frankly, where we see most trainings or most strategic plans fall off. In other words, I don't know if you've ever been a part of this, but we've been a part of this to where, and this is before I owned my own consulting firm, we'd have this great executive retreat, we'd come up with all these great ideas, we go through this training manual or executive retreat manual, 
it's Friday, maybe it's on a Saturday, we go play golf, maybe Saturday afternoon or whatever, and then we come back into the office on Monday and it's same old, same old. It's like we never had that executive retreat. And I remember how I was like, gosh, what is the point of having these executive retreats if we're not gonna implement anything? So the reason why we created uh, uh, the Lead With Purpose uh, between me and my partner, Mark, is because we wanted to give them a process or a framework to work by to make sure that doesn't just happen, that it actually this becomes part of your uh, daily or weekly life when it comes to making sure that your business visions are actually met. Because this is a really, really powerful platform, powerful framework. Uh, typically, the results we've seen of using this process is a 22% increase in profits. Uh, over a six to 12 month basis. We've seen sales uh, increase on average 28%. Uh, we've seen even much higher numbers than that, but we've also, seen, uh, we've also seen people engage and really fulfill their own destiny or, or fulfill their own potential inside of a company. It's just so fun to watch somebody who is either apathetic or even miserable and all of a sudden get engaged because like, okay, now I know why I'm here. I know what the brand purpose is and I now know uh, how I can reach my full potential inside of this business because we talked about this. The definition of leadership is simply articulating your vision, finding out what your employees, what they want to accomplish in their career, and then putting those two in alignment to where you actually create a better world for everybody. Not only for yourself, but also for your employees and ultimately, of course, for your clients, the people that you serve or your customers. So accountability, we find that the best way to do it is to first and foremost is to have a weekly what we call 15 to 20 minute status check. All that that is, is basically going through your 90 day goals and you're asking each employee, okay, what progress have you made? What help do you need? And what obstacles have you come through? Because you are gonna come through some obstacles and that's normal because as you go through these things, sometimes you find out things that you didn't take into consideration at first, which is something that we like to call zero based thinking. Brian Tracy, who is the organization that we're licensed through because his processes and his tools and his training uh, have stood the test of time. He's helped, helped last time we checked over 5,000 companies uh, on getting to the next level by scaling their business and he has consulted some of the largest and most successful Fortune 500 companies in the world like IBM and Hertz Selenies and uh, General Electric. And the results that his clients experience are actually results that our clients also resonate with as well because we use the same exact process. And what we find is that when we have this 15 to 20 minute exchange, or what we have, when we have this, it opens up something called zero-based thinking, which is what Brian Tracy recommends. Zero-based thinking is this, knowing what I know now, what would I continue doing, and what would I stop doing? Maybe that you come across a 90-day goal that you realize, you know what, this isn't all that important. I don't know why we thought about this, but it seemed like a good idea at the time, but it didn't, it's not generating the results that we want. So let's scrap it and either replace it with another 90-day goal or just completely scrap it all together and just go with the ones that you have now. But what that does is it keeps your team accountable and it keeps the open dialogue about what your strategic plan is open so that you can continue moving forward. It's not a, uh, you know, it's, it's not a meeting to demean anybody. It's not a meeting to make it feel terrible. It's really a, a meeting to where you actually get people to engage and talk and, and talk about what progress have they made on their strategic plan or on their 90 day uh, uh, goals. And then what we do at that point is, is basically act as your coach or the coach saying, okay, what, uh, you know, either congratulations, you're on track. That's awesome. That's great. At a boy, keep going. Or we say is, look, it seems like you're running into issues. Do you need more resources? Do you need other people to do it? Should we delegate it to somebody else, which we'll talk about in just a second on how to do that. But really, it's really to create open dialogue on to track the progression of the actual plan. Um, I have seen some of my clients, instead of doing uh, weekly, I have seen them do it every 30 days. It's not as effective as the weekly, but it's still very effective. Here's the thing, it's better than nothing. So many businesses, when we first start consulting them, especially in this process, like I said earlier, we've done over 1,100, we've done 1,110 of these, not over 11, that, not, we've done 1,110 of these, and we actually find that the ones who do it weekly reach their goals and reach their vision faster than the ones that do it monthly, but they still both reach it because what you're doing is you're keeping people accountable and on pace. So when we talk about delegation, I wanna talk about 
what is a proper way to delegate these tasks to these people because it's so important to know what process or what framework we should use in order to properly delegate these 90-day goals uh, to our staff. Uh, the first thing is, is remember that delegating a task is at a task level. I know it sounds kind of uh, obvious, but it's, uh, just walk me th I want to walk you through this for just a second. One thing that I find is that when somebody uh, says, okay, well, I'm going to delegate project management to this person, or I'm going to delegate, um, you know, billing to this person, you have to be very careful that you're delegating a task instead of a role. For example, you can't delegate project management, but what you can do is delegate aspects of project management. Because here's the thing, we have found that there are four levels of competency when doing a task. There is unconsciously incompetent, which means I don't know anything about it. Consciously incompetent, which is like, wow, I didn't know anything about that, and now I know how much I don't know. And then the third stage is um, consciously competent. In other words, you've got some training on it, you've got some on-the-job experience, so now you have a level of competency where you can actually be productive on doing that. And then the, and then the uh, last stage, or the fourth stage of competency, is what we call unconsciously incompetent, or excuse me, unconsciously competent. That means that it comes so easily, so natural to you that you reach an expert level within that task. And so as you're delegating these tasks to them, realize that or take a, have, have, take a time out and understand where are they specifically on the competency curve when it comes to actually performing that 90-day goal. And we find that the most human, there's actually three delegation styles, micromanagement, leadership by milestones, and then leadership. Uh, so let me talk about each one of those and how they apply. If somebody is unconsciously incompetent or consciously incompetent, the only humane way to manage them is through micromanagement. Now, before I go any further, yes, I don't like micromanaging people either. However, what I hate even more is for me to delegate a task to somebody who is unconsciously incompetent and set them up to fail. I mean, for example, imagine you know, I taught my uh, uh, four-year-old daughter a little while ago to, uh, to actually ride her bike. Uh, imagine if I asked you to come to my house and observe how I train her how to ride a bike. And imagine if I said, okay, there's the bike. Uh, you've seen me ride it a thousand times. Go do it. And then she comes back crying, bloody, maybe a couple of broken bones. And I just sit there and say, what happened? Why didn't, you, why, didn't, why didn't you succeed? I don't understand it. And although that might sound cruel or a, a, or a little bit harsh, what I find is that so many managers and so many business owners do the exact same thing to their employees and you're setting them up to fail. So if you're going to give them a task, find out where they are on the competency curve and if they're unconsciously incompetent or consciously incompetent, you'd have to take them through step by step exactly how you want it done. The second management style, which actually is my favorite, is management by milestones or leadership by milestones. What you do is you tell somebody, okay, here's what I want to accomplish in the next 90 days. Uh, after, and here are the 10 steps to get there. And, and after every two or three steps, I want to just come back and, and check in every once in a while. So we find that when clients do the 30-day uh, accountability sessions, what they're really doing is delegating by the use of management by milestones because they feel like their staff has a consciously competent uh, task uh, uh, ability and so they feel that doing it every 30 days is just fine. So as you do your accountability or delegation and if you're going to choose as to whether you should do it weekly or monthly, really decide how competent are these people at actually performing the task or the 90-day goal that they have now uh, signed up to do because remember during the uh, the second stage which is putting together the 90-day goal and the one-year goal and the five-year goal you're getting their input on what should be done by um, uh, by department and you know sometimes just because they have an idea doesn't necessarily mean that they're the best ones to carry it out it might we might have to actually delegate that task to somebody else um, so I've actually even seen uh, a couple of my clients start off weekly just to kind of get a sense of how it's going and then transition to monthly and also vice versa. I've seen clients who uh, did their accountability and their encouragement sessions every 30 days and realized, you know what, that's not enough time. So they went back to the, to the weekly. But the point is this, when your staff knows that you're taking their ideas seriously and that you've got everybody on the same page, what that does is it really empowers, encourages, and the productivity levels that we have seen are just absolutely off the charts. So 
in order to really get everybody on the same page, you've got to engage them through leadership or, you know, through your, through your brand purpose, your identity statement, your core values, and your SWOT analysis. And then, your, of course, your blue sky vision, which is really the linchpin to getting your business to the next level. Second is you got to bring in your staff, communicate your brand purpose, your identity statement, your core values, your SWOT analysis, and your blue sky vision to your team, to the mid-level managers. And then get their feedback on, okay, what is our five-year goal? What is our one-year goal? What is our quarterly goal? Now, some of you might be thinking, you know what, Charles, this is a lot to take in at once. I've given you a lot of information. And what, I'm, what I want to tell you is that it, it, I'm actually about to make it much easier for you. Over the next couple of days, I'm going to be rolling out a program. We're going to walk you through step-by-step step on how to create your own one-page strategic plan. This is not some 32-page plan, 64-page plan that gets done by these management consultants, sits on a shelf, and does a good job of collecting dust for the rest of its life. Now this is something that we're actually going to create step by step with you to where you get this, which is basically all the stuff that we just talked about on one simple and easy to use strategic plan that ensures that you get your business to the next level. And when I say ensure, I mean it. We have a money back guarantee. If you don't get your company to where you wanted it to, and if you're not satisfied with the one page plan of the progress, just let me know. I'm just going to give you your money back. So be on the lookout uh, in the next couple of days from an email from me where I'm going to talk about this program I'm going to be releasing out called Lead With Purpose. It's the same program that we have delivered 1,110 times to our clients that have all been very, very successful and seen their business reach heights that they never dreamed were possible. But what it allowed the business owner to do and the team to do is to really get engaged and to make their business visions a reality. I hope that this uh, training video has been helpful to you and, and eye-opening. Uh, go ahead and start, uh, you know, start implementing some of the things that we had talked about. If you're, if you'd like to wait till uh, uh, I announce the program in a couple of days before starting, that's fine. But we find that that sometimes when we walk you step by step through the process, it just makes your life much easier because we've done it so many times. We know kind of how to walk you through those different things and give you some frameworks on how to make sure that your business vision becomes a reality. Um, thank you very much for listening. I hope that this has added tremendous value because at the end of the day, like I've said many times before, at the end of the day, my heart's intention is to deliver, deliver freedom to you as a business owner and also deliver freedom to your team, to your employees so they can reach their full potential in this life. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.